Welcome to Let's Get Real Wednesday. I'm Pastor Mark Walker from Willow Grove Baptist Church, uh, Dallas, Texas. We're so thankful for you to tune in with us, and we're glad that, uh, that you have. I pray and hope that all is well with you and your family, and I uh, ask you to continue to pray for our, the bereaved family and those that are sick. Let's give them the confidence of knowing that they can do all things through Christ that will strengthen them. So I pray that uh, God will strengthen those that are sick in their body. Then also we want to remind you to go out and register to vote. We still have to October the 5th to go out and vote, uh, to go out and uh, register so you can vote. And we want to encourage you to make sure you do your part, exercise your right to go out and vote. Tonight, uh, I'd like for us to just come together and let's just talk about some of the things that are happening in our world and just be able to realize that the Lord will bless us and see us through. So if you would, join me in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we ask you, God, you would bless this time, Lord, that we look at uh, in your word. We come before you and ask you, God, to forgive us of all of our sins. Then, God, we pray, God, for our leaders. We ask you, God, you give them wisdom. Then, God, we pray, God, for those that are bereaved families and those that are sick in the body. We ask you, God, you would touch and heal in the name of Jesus Christ. You said in your word, by your stripes, we are healed. So, Lord, I ask you, God, to give us the confidence to believe that all things are possible. Now, Lord, I ask you, God, to bless this time that we may spend to learn more about your precepts. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You know, a few weeks ago, we looked at, um, in the same passage, pretty much in Ephesians, where we're going to go this evening, in Ephesians chapter 6, and we talked about being strong. But I want to look today in, uh, in Ephesians again, chapter 6, and mainly looking at that verse 11. So you with your Bibles would turn to Ephesians chapter 6, and uh, let's look at uh, verse 11. If I had to put a title, uh, I basically want to use the day <clears throat> and talk about able to stand. Uh, in this text, Paul used the word able. And I want to look at that word able. God has blessed us. He, he has uh, blessed us, and then he gives the Holy Spirit that enables us to be able to deal with a lot of things. Uh, one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit, the Bible said, is to bring things back to our remembrance. And so I pray that when we get in these crises, are you going through whatever battle you are facing, that through the power of the Holy Spirit, that God will bring back those things to your remember, to remind you that he loves you, that you are never alone. But look at this passage in Ephesians chapter 6, <clears throat> starting in verse 11, it says, put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Look, he says, be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. <clears throat> you know, we talk about being able. You know, and I basically thought about this word able is that God had given us everything we would need to be able to stand because he knew that we were going to have to go against the devil. But I think many times we get the word devil mixed up. Uh, I think we underestimate the devil. I think we're looking for us uh, some running around with a red suit like we saw it through the cartoons when we growed up. But that, you won't see the devil. Uh, but I want you to know that he is, he, he is present. And I want you to realize the thing about it, we serve a God that's omnipresent. No matter where we are, God is there, you know. And, and the devil does not have that capability. But I want you to know that God would never leave you nor forsake you. But notice what he says also. I want to say this in verse 10. I want to go back just a little bit. He said, finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. He basically, Paul is encouraging us and said, be strong, be strong. You got to be strong to be able to withstand. And, and what does it mean to be strong? And basically, not in your own strength, but in the strength of God, in his might, be strong. But he also tells us to be able. He basically equipped us. He equipped us and he make a suggestion to us. And I like the suggestion that he makes is in uh, verse 12. Notice what he says. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, 
against spiritual hosts of the wickedness in high places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil days and having done all to stand. Notice what he says, you know, having done all to stand. He basically began to say, you know, there are certain things we have to do to be able to stand. But I, I thought about something because of the, the thing that we have to realize is something that Paul said about we need to understand what we're standing against. And, you know, what does it really mean to stand? So look with me back in Ephesians. I want us to look in Ephesians chapter 5. And I want to go to that thing in verse 16. Verse 16 says in Ephesians chapter 5, he says, <clears throat> um, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Paul said redeeming the time. So basically said, now remember, you got to remember the time that we're living in. The day and time that we're living in right now is evil. You know, we hear it. We, we know it. I don't have to go through it. We see the news. But I think as believers, uh, we fail to realize what we're up against. I think we fail to realize we have a real enemy. I think we fail to realize uh, spiritual wickedness in high places. What it means, spiritual, basically, basically said, you know, we're in a spiritual war. Many times we're thinking that we're fighting against a person, but it's not a person. It's Satan. You, can't, you just can't see him. He may use someone, you know, but you have to understand that the Satan, that he, he comes uh, trying to do his very best to break your confidence in you and to uh, destroy your faith, you know, to make you think less than of yourself. Uh, to make you believe that you're on this island all by yourself. That's why Paul come back and said, you know, whatever you're doing, whatever you're going through, stand. You know, and knowing that God has blessed you to be able to stand. That, that's, that's what really encouraged me. Is that, you know, great is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Satan is in the world, but what's in you is greater than what's coming at you. And when John talked about that over in 1 John... I think a lot of times we fail to remember what's in us. But when you realize that the Holy Spirit is in you, you begin to realize God have enabled you to be able to stand. So I want to encourage you, whatever you're going through, be able, knowing that you are able to what? Stand. Now, watch this. So he said also, why it's very important to understand about this evil force, because of the fact that there's some that Paul said, and I just want to look in Ephesians a little bit. Ephesians, if you would, go to Ephesians 2. And we're going backwards. And I would say, man, why pastor going backwards? I, I want to go backwards because I want to bring you forward. I want, I, want, I want to bring you forward because of the fact I want you to remember where you came from. I want you to real, realize that there was a day that we were in total darkness. You know, uh, but now that you're in the light, you have to understand that there's an evil force coming against you. When you was in darkness, you didn't feel it because of the fact, you know, you didn't have Christ in your life. So it says something in, um, in Ephesians uh, chapter 2. And let me start at verse 6. He says, uh, let me start at 5. Even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. You know, there was a time we were dead. We were spiritually dead. But now that you are spiritually alive, we have to be able to understand the spirit realm. The spirit realm basically is that you begin to look at life different. Now, when you were spiritually dead, you, you didn't think about the spiritual realm because of the fact, you know, you, you were in darkness. But now that you're in the light, you have to stop and think about the things you're going through right now. The things that you're experiencing right now is from the evil one. Those are what we call those spiritual wickedness in high places, principalities. So notice what Paul said in 2.6. He said, and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly place in Christ Jesus. Verse 7 says that in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us 
in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been what saved, through faith and that not of yourself. It is a gift of God. You know, God has given us a gift. And what was the gift? He gave you a gift of grace. And I want you to remember, even when you mess up in life, I want you to remember that gift that God has given you. And that gift is called grace. I think a lot of times we overlook uh, the gift that God has given us. And it's grace because why? God realized that we couldn't keep the law. None of us was good enough to keep the law, you know. But yet and still, God still loved us. He loved us so much that he said, look, I want, I want you, I want to save you. I love you. I want to redeem you. So how did he redeem us? By sending his son to die up on the cross for our sin. Now that he has redeemed us, now that we're saved, does not mean that Satan will not come after us. He's going to throw his fiery doors. He's going to try to discourage you. He's going to try to get you down. He's going to try to keep you in depression. He's going to try his very best to get you to question if God really loves you. But you have to know without a shadow of a doubt that the Lord said, if I'm for you, I'm more than the whole world against you. It's so important for us to realize that because God is counting on us to demonstrate his love. And when I said demonstrate, watch what he said over in Colossians. Uh, Colossians, if you would, turn to Colossians with me. Colossians, uh, I think it's in Colossians chapter 4. <clears throat> Colossians chapter 4. And this is this Colossians chapter 4. In this verse we get.